Calvin Casta, and uh, it's Monday, the 18th day of March, 2019, the day after St. Patrick's Day, but don't tell the folks who will be crowding into the Angel Center Cardinal Ballroom here on the campus of SUNY Plattsburgh for the 61st annual uh, North Country Chamber of Commerce St. Patrick's Day Breakfast. This year is sponsored by Woodman Life. It'll be, this will be the last year that Woodman Life will be sponsoring this annual event. So next year they'll have to have a brand new sponsor. Uh, greetings will be presented by the chairperson, uh, John Vermette. Master of Ceremonies, as has been the case for the past several years, will be Matt Boyer. Invocation by Deacon Mark Bennett. Musical guests will be the Cumberland Bay chapter of the Barbershop Harmony, Kelly Donahue and Nate Potorek. Maker of Mischief will be Al Gettler, presenter of the Royal Order, Kevin Colleen, and the Royal Order of the Blondie Stone will be conferred upon the 61st Irishman of the Year by Matt Boyer and Kevin Colleen. And uh, if you're wondering who the first 60 were, I'm going to read them to you right now. It started in 1959, which was 60 years ago, so this would, of course, be the 61st. Uh, Erwin Joe Bornstein. Uh, Joe Bornstein was the first one, followed by Dr. George Angel, General Perry M. Hoisington, Horace F. Davies, Evelyn A. Merritt, George M. Larios, Dr. Angelo LaMariana, Reverend Michael Riley, Major General Warren Johnson, Mayor Roland St. Pierre, Moses Scotty Aspinel, Marie Beamer, James A. Fitzpatrick, and uh, he's one of the few that are actually were Irish that received this award, Edward W. Smith, I. Edward Kleinberg, Euclid M. Gordon, Dr. Nicholas Tri Troyoisi, William McBride, <laughs> Jan Shambo, Dr. A. B. de Grandpre, E. Glenn Giltz, Curtis Shipman, Alfred Light, Dr. Alfred Light, that is, Rita Banks, Clyde A. Lewis, Sr., Mary Ellen Rogers, Monsignor Morris Dwyer, Christopher Kit Booth, and a duo in 1987, John and Helen Ionelli. Then followed by another famous Irishman from the streets of Plattsburgh, Michael Finnegan. Elizabeth P.D. Wheeler, Keith Defiat, Joe McGrath, Paul Green, and Charles Lewis, Judge Lewis to many of us, Michael J. Mannix, Claire Norris Guano, Gordy Little, my good friend, and Longtime compatriot on Hometown Cable was 1996, followed by Wayne Byrne, a Connecticut peddler Stan Ransom, Bill Morgan, Senator Ronald B. Stafford, Jack LaDuke, famous newsman, still going strong, now from Mountain Lake. He was, of course, for Channel 3 for so many years. Jeannie Roberts, Shirley O'Connell, Mark Berry, who was the father of the MC today, Matt Berry. Oh, excuse me, <laughs> he's not the father. Ralph Boyer is the father of, uh, <laughs> uh, Matt Boyer uh, worked <laughs> with Mark Berry in the Community Development Center at CDC Insurance. And uh, uh, <laughs> Mark Berry is Matt Boyer's mentor, but uh, <laughs> Ralph Boyer is Matt's father, not, uh, <laughs> not Mark Berry. Art Spiegel, Sonny Spiegel, Dr. Nancy Church, John Masella, Gordon Hazel, Herb Carpenter, John Zerlo, the county clerk, Dr. Celine Paquette, also followed back-to-back -back Champlainers there, Hope Corrier, Rod Roderick Giltz, Cajun Dolan, Dr. Dolan, Debbie Mo Momat, Robert Parks, Sister Debbie Blow from the North Country Mission of Hope. And last year was Kevin Colleen, the longtime uh, Master of Ceremonies. He was honored, but he was, you know, Matt, as we said, has been the MC for 
must be somewhere around a decade. So all that will be coming up here at the 61st annual St. Patrick's Day breakfast here at the Angel Center. It's my job to get you quiet so you can pay attention to the rest of the group. So don't pay attention to me now. For those of you that don't know me, my name is John Vermette and I'm the general manager for Spencer ARL New York. Over the past 10 years, our company here in Plattsburgh has provided material, logistics, sub-assembly management to both NOVA and Prevo bus divisions. In short, we help them to deliver some of the highest quality buses in North America. I also have the privilege of participating on two local boards. One of them is the North Country Workforce Development Board, alongside Sylvia Nelson and her staff. The next is the North Country Chamber of Commerce with Gary Douglas, Jody Parks, Sue Matten, Christy Kennedy, and the rest of the fantastic staff that helped put this together today. And currently, I'm the chairman on both of those boards, and thus why I'm here today to welcome all of you to the 61st St. Daddy's St. Patrick's Day Breakfast. This community event is certainly one of the most enjoyable, and this year's event will certainly not disappoint. It's only fitting at this point in time that we thank our sponsor, sponsor Woodman Life. This is their fourth year as our sponsor, and on behalf of Woodman Life, to say a few words, I'd like you all to help me wish Tom, thank Tim Gagne to come up and say a few words. Good morning. So I've got an odd thing to tell you. This is the uh, fourth year that we've been able to, uh, to sponsor, and this will be the last year that Woodman Life sponsors, because as a business entity, Woodman Life will no longer be in the Northeast. The decision was made at home office, and uh, we will, you know, we, we will be moving on. Uh, well, the, the sales force will be moving on. The great thing that I get to tell you is that Woodman Life is going nowhere. The organization will continue as a community entity, will continue to be able to do the things that we have been known for uh, in the community, which is flags, flag poles. I was just discussing that a few minutes ago with some. Um, and, and all of the, uh, the different things that we do for our members and for, for the community. But as a business entity, Woodman Life will no longer exist in the Northeast. Um, we've been proud to be a part of, uh, of this, uh, this organization, and we've been proud to be a part of, of the North Country and, and doing all the things that we got to do as, uh, as Woodman Life. But the great thing is that I had a great, te I had a great team of salespeople and we're going to be moving on to another company, so watch our awnings over the next couple of weeks. Those awnings are going to go away, you're going to see where human life go away, but you're going to see a new uh, entity coming into the same office building, same phone numbers. We're going to be there, and, uh, and, and you'll see a different organization uh, coming into play. I, I won't spoil the surprise, but watch around April 1st, and uh, you'll see something <laughs> kind of cool. So, I appreciate everyone here, and I will leave you with this. May you have the hindsight to know where you've been, the foresight to know where you're going, and the insight to know when you've gone too far. Thank you. As I'm sure most of you are aware by now that John Etley will soon be retiring as president of SUNY Plattsburgh after 14 years. Dr. Etling has been a great friend and partner of the North Country Chamber since his arrival in Plattsburgh. And I would like you all to help us thank him with a round of applause. Thank you, John.
Master of Ceremony really needs no introduction, as most of you in the room have met him at least once or twice on occasions. He is most certainly one of the North Country's strongest advocates. He remains tirelessly committed, extremely supportive, and certainly involved in many of the facets that make up this unique community. An all-around great individual. We're lucky to have him in this region. Please welcome Matt Worth. introduction like that, I didn't know who was probably up here. But, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, just want to thank, if I forget later, I want to thank uh, the sponsor, Woodman. Uh, we are anxious to see what will happen in April. Um, I wish I could be saying that I would not be here next year. I'm still hoping, Jody, so... Oh, uh, but anyway, uh, for a Monday morning when you get uh, about 450 people out to come for a breakfast at 7.30, I'd say the Chamber is doing something right, especially if those people are coming here and willing to tolerate me and our other cast of characters that we have uh, with us uh, today. Um, it is uh, exciting that everyone's here, and while we're on the cast of characters, let's introduce them. We have our longtime retired and now back again, MC Kevin Colleen. We have our friend from the Green Sod of Grand Isle, Vermont, Al Gedler. We have Deacon Mark Bennett, always dressed in his beautiful Irish garb. And we have our, our musical talented folks with Kelly and Nate. Now, what we'll do is like to start it off right. We'll have Deacon Bennett come up here and uh, have the invocation. Talk of the morning to me. We bow our heads, please. May God give you, for every storm, a rainbow, for every tear, a smile. For every care, a promise, and a blessing in each trial. For every problem life sends, a faithful friend to share. For every sigh, a sweet song, and an answer for each prayer. Amen. Have a great day. Great job, Deacon Bennett. Great job. I just want to get things situated as I do every year, go into my Manning school box, get out some of my uh, things that I'll be needing here. <coughs> Recently I was uh, helping Paul Grasso pack some things up in his condo, need a little help as we know he's leaving, and he gave me this, and I really, I just thought I'd bring it. I honestly don't know if I'm going to use it, it's just a... <coughs> Just a rubber pig. Uh, I made him corn beef, but he's there to help us if we need it. <coughs> then it wouldn't be tradition for me if I didn't have a little bit of uh, liquid courage. My apple juice up here to help me, so we don't want to break tradition. So, also, I forgot to say thanks to Wiry and Hometown Cable that uh, they're here today. Uh, our wiry folks, hopefully they can hear everything fine as they always do. We will have a few photos later on, unfortunately they won't see those, uh, but maybe they'll get it uh, just uh, through the waves and understand it anyway. Uh, on my way here this morning, surprisingly, <clears throat> I had a pretty weird occurrence happen to me, and I thought how fitting that it happened today that I could share it with all of you. Like I uh, normally do in the morning, I stop at the uh, corner store, corner stewards, and I get a cup of coffee. Today I noticed I was low in gas, so I said I better, better fill up while I'm here. So I'm pumping gas at about 5.30 this morning, and the guy on the other side of the uh, pump from me smoking a cigarette. The cigarette's hanging out of his mouth. He said, morning. I said, morning. <laughs> but I think to myself, holy moly, you can't smoke a cigarette while you're pumping gas. I said, the sign on the, on the pump says, don't smoke gas, or don't smoke cigarettes, right? <laughs> but I'm too shy, as you can tell, I don't say a word. I pump my gas, 
I run in to pay for it, get my cup of coffee, and when I get to the door, I can hear the man screaming. I turn around, he is, his arms are burning. They're flamed up. He's, he's, he's yelling, screaming. I yell in the store and say, call 911, there's a man on fire out there. The sheriff, Admiral, you'd be proud of this, but at that moment, we look out and it up pulls a, a sheriff a, 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 in his cruiser. The deputy steps out. He must have had two old cups of coffee or something, but he immediately just starts splashing them onto the arms of the guy and he pats them out and he puts the guy out. Amazing. So, you know, I get my coffee and I'm walking out, and as I walk out to get in my car, I see that the deputy is, is arresting him. The man's in cuffs, he's putting him in the back of the car. So now I'm not so shy, I'm curious. So I drove over as I was leaving, put my window down, and I said, pardon me for interrupting, but I said, what did the guy do wrong? I mean, he just almost died. You put him out, it was amazing. He said, it's pretty obvious, sir. He was waving a firearm. <laughs> If you don't like my joke, then maybe you'll hear that. <laughs> so now we want to introduce our past Irish men and women who are here today. And we have many of them, and we are very happy that they're here. We'll start, and then we will ask that you do stand, uh, but we'll clap at the end uh, when we uh, introduce the last one. From 42 years ago in 1977, our own Jan Shambo. 1998, at the same table, our Connecticut Rambler, Stan Ransom. From 2001, our friendly face at PBS, Jack Ledoux. From 2006, smiling face from SUNY, Dr. Nancy Church. From 2007, our little Irish and Italian friend, Johnny Masella with a heart of gold. 2009, our wives are the hard-working Herb Carpenter. From the northern tier, John Zerlo, former teacher of mine, you should be real proud. <laughs> Another friend from the northern tier, Celine Paquette. Person who's helped many people, Shell Dolan. Johnny, uh, 2015, Debbie Beaumont, always, always hard-working. And then 2016, our soft-spoken gentleman, Bob Parks. And then last year's, 2018, funny man, Kevin Foley. Round of applause for all of you. business breakfast here, and I thought that we could talk about one of the hot topics that we've all been hearing, we've seen it, uh, chamber newsletters, we've heard about it on the television and elsewhere, but the sensitivity, sexual harassment, workplace training. We've seen you know, Jackie Kelleher, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Northern Insuring, uh, all, all trying to help educate us on this, uh, the county government and a lot of employers have have had their, uh, their teams go in and take some of the training. I myself attended the training and I now work from my home office. <laughs> no, seriously, um, I did take the training and I'm more aware than I ever was um, about things that, that are said that maybe we don't think too, too clear too, uh, too much about before they're said. As many of you may know, many of you may, uh, may not, but I, I work with Alexandra Berry in my real estate office, and uh, we're a relatively small office, so we work pretty closely together now for many years. And uh, with all of this sensitivity workplace training, I've just pondered some of the past things that have been said in our office. And the more I thought about them, the more I realized just how hurtful they were. And I thought I'd just share a few with them that probably shouldn't have been said in our office. <laughs> You are not as good looking as Neil Facet, Matt. <laughs> or there was this one. Canadian Club is not coffee creamer. <laughs> this one. No one really cares if you're gluten free or not. 
Get over it, man. <laughs> With that, we'll move on to introduce our singers. For a little bit of our traditional uh, great music, I think we're running my right. I think that's where we're at. All right, we're going to have Kelly Donahue and Nate come up. Nate, by the way, plays the dulcimer, which is a traditional Irish string instrument. I had to look that up. But uh, pretty impressive from what I hear, so let's hear it. Well, chap of the day, show you my lads. The lassies. Have to be inclusive today nowadays, right? Are you out there? Top of the day, Julia. <laughs> oh my God! I thought you thought him better, Kevin. Well, it's a beautiful day today, and it's an honor to be here. And here's the specialness of today: we have a dull summer here. But here's the difference: Nate is a national champion runner-up for the dulcimers competition in Winfield, Kansas. So we brought someone who knows what he's doing. And you know, and I think it'd be nice to have him do a little ditty, a little tune for us, don't you think? Would you like that? Good old Irish way 
and I'd give the world if she could sing that song to me this day.
but it doesn't make me think of another joke. Yeah, you mind? I know this is your show now. Is Ed Davis here? Stand and be recognized. Now you picked on we will be king. There's something that a lot of people in this room play golf. But Willie and Ed are actually good at it. <laughs> now, if you can believe this or not, Ed Davis, did you tell him he could sit down, man? <laughs> I guess he did. Actually hit a golf ball out of my mouth. Who, raise your hand if you think that's malarkey. <laughs> Want to bet a hundred dollars? How many people in the room were there when that happened? <laughs> yeah, it actually happened. It had 255 yards. Off a tee in my mouth. Well, and you're looking well, but in this story, you died. <laughs> Ed has to go meet his maker. So, he sees the Lord and he said, well, you never used my name in vain, did you? He says, well, to tell you the truth, just last week before he died, he said, I, I was on the golf course. And I hit a shot off the tee and it went in the trees. The Lord said, oh, Understand that's when you use my name in vain. It says, No, I've got myself together, got it through the trees, and hit it in the rocks on the other side. I said, Oh, I understand. I can see how that would frustrate you, and then you use my name in vain, right? I said, No, got it out of there, and I hit it on the green, just four inches short of the hole. And the Lord said, oh, that must have been frustrating. That's when you use my name in vain, right? And says, no. And the Lord said, Jesus Christ, you didn't miss a four-inch butt, did you? <laughs> <laughs> going to work in our audience that, like he does so well and uh, bring us some Irish humor, I'm sure. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Big hand for Matt, everybody. <laughs> what a wonderful start to this morning, don't you think? The gentleman from Woodman came up and said, Woodman life is dying. Isn't that a great way to start the day? I just felt so good. The sun just went down. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Anybody here here to tell you a few Irish jokes? We'll start with, oh, have to laugh. Jody, by the way, Jody, stand up, please. Look at that. I'm going to catch me year round. Look at the audience. I'm going to catch me year round. I was walking in, I had my cards in my hand. Jody said, you have any jokes this year, right? I said, no, that wouldn't be any fun at all. No, no. Same jokes, 25 years, yeah. So a sobby Mrs. O Mrs. Murphy uh, approaches the father of Brady after mass. <clears throat> he says, dear, what's bothering you? She says, oh, Father, I have terrible news. My husband passed away last night. She says, oh, Mary, that's terrible. Did he have any last requests? She said, certainly, Father. He said, Mary, put down the gun. <laughs> <laughs> a little chuckle on that one. We'll keep going, okay? Yeah. One of my favorite ones. Irishman's driving his car home. He's weaving on all the road. And the Gardet sees him coming. That's the police in Ireland. He pulls him over. Cop walks up to the car and says, Well, you've been to the pub, have you? He says, Yes, I have. Well, have you been drinking? Uh, I did all right. He says, I bet you have done all right. When you went around that last curve, your wife, she fell out of the car. He says, Oh, thank God, I thought I'd gone deaf. <laughs> Now Bob Parks, one of the former Irishmen, is he's over at the Walmart and he's trying to find a parking space. He can't find one anywhere. 
He says, oh, Lord, I can't stand this. If you open up a space for me, I'll give out Guinness every Sunday, and I'll go to Mass as well. Suddenly the clouds part, the sun shines like it did before. There's an empty parking space. Bob says, oh, never mind, I found one myself. <laughs> Speaking of Bob Parks, where is he? Stand up, Bob. There he is over here. Big hand for Bob Parks. Bob and I have something in common. We're both 6'5", uh, but we're also uh, former newspaper publishers. Bob, it's so good to see you. Yes, I did. Okay, so uh, Seamus opened up his Press Republican and is shocked to see his own obituary in there. So he uh, calls a friend in a panic and he said, did you read the paper today? And uh, the friend says, uh, yeah, I read it. So where are you calling from? <laughs> and thank uh, right you, Bob, everybody. I'll get you. Did you like that one, sir? Yeah. I did. Yeah, you didn't crack a smile. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> It's okay. It's all right. Very good. And then where's the gentleman from the university who's, uh, who's retiring? Is that? Sir, please. You, you know what? They said stand up and everybody else stood up so no one could see you for God's sakes. <laughs> and when you were another big stay in your seats and give him another big hand so you can see you. years, you know, and I want you to know the 15 years you're here, uh, uh, Deacon Bennett and I were looking around for the Irish flag and we found it. You guys know where it is? Who's part of the Irish flag in the room? Anybody? Yes, where is it? It's right there, okay? And for your 15th year anniversary, we're going to turn it around because you hung it upside down. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> it's a huge controversy that, that Channel 5 is working on right now to come with you. <laughs> The dream goes on the top. Oh, not embarrassing. It's not embarrassing. It's not embarrassing at all. That's my job. I'm embarrassed here after 15 years. Here's what I thought that was the flag of Mexico. Big <laughs> hand for him here. That was great. Now, um, you all know every year I have to talk to the what? The world's tallest. Leprechaun. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the world's tallest leprechaun. He's back again. And this year he has a shirt. All right, you ready? Go. So did you hear the one about the American forest? No, not in the mind. Oh, he was boasting to an Irishman how advanced those Americans were. And he said, gee, we didn't even put a man on the moon in the American did. And he said, that's nothing, replied the Irishman. We're going to put a man on the sun. Don't be stupid, said the American. He'll fry before he even gets there. Oh, no, he won't. We're going to send him tonight. Ah. <laughs> In the world, tallest leopard power. One of my favorite ones. Now, Flaherty, he's got a bit of a drinking problem. Every night he goes to the pub till too late, to closing time. He comes walking home from the cemetery and gets to his house and makes a ruckus. Well, you know, Mrs. Barrett, she's had a none of this. None of this. She's had so much trouble with him. She says, I'm going to fix his wagon. I'm going to get myself a devil suit. I'm going to hide behind a tombstone. And I'm going to pop out and scare the bejesus out of him. So she sets it up for the next night. Flaherty comes stumbling through the cemetery. And up she pops behind the tombstone. Flaherty, it's to hell with you if you don't quit your drinking. He says, who the hell are you? She says, I'm the devil, you damn fool. He says, what well, it pleased to meet you. I'm married to your sister. <laughs> Father Bennett was out for a drive in the North Country in the road. And the state trooper pulled him over. Immediately smells alcohol on his breath, and next to him is an empty bottle of wine on the seat. Cop says, have you been drinking? Deacon Bennett says, just water. Cop says, well, why do I smell wine? Father Ben looks on the bottle in the seat and says, Good God, he's done it again. <laughs> that one didn't get hit so very well. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to make my way over here to the Channel 5 table, where we have the lovely Leanne is Denier, right? Is that right? Leanne Denier? Saturday morning, Sunday mornings as well? Saturday and Sunday mornings, the anchor out there reporting. Can we give her a big hand from Channel 5? 
Where are you from? San Francisco. Oh, well, of course everybody trades San Francisco for the, uh, the fabulous Lake Champlain. Yeah. Yeah. And the, uh, we, what is it Twain said? The coldest winter I ever spent was a summer in San Francisco, right? Yeah, I think that's right. All right, so we're going to hand you the mic and you can tell your joke. I'm going to tell you guys a story about a name, guy named John who goes to the doctor, okay? So, he goes to the doctor, and the doctor tells his patient, I have bad news and I have worse news for you, John. He goes, oh dear, what's the bad news? The doctor replies, well, you only have 24 hours to live. He goes, that's terrible. How can the news get any possibly worse? The doctor goes, I've been trying to contact you since yesterday. <laughs> Perfect. Give her a minute. Because they break the news when it happens, right? <laughs> I mean, this table can pay me later, right? Steph never will lose money later. But you got here too late. You couldn't uh, tell the joke. Too much Guinness. Too much Guinness. Okay, good. That's good. All right, well, Gary uh, Connors walks his dog through the village every day. One day, Mr. Connors is walking without his dog. His pal Billy sees him. He says, Oh, where's your dog? He replies, Well, I have to put him down. He says, Oh, Jesus, was he mad? He says, well, he wasn't exactly happy about it. <laughs> and finally, my, uh, my, uh, by the way, this is Billy here. Stand up, Billy, ready to see you. I don't know who the hell this guy is, except I live in Vermont. He's here. I know that face from television, right? Yeah, Senor, a good-looking guy. That's, that's that part, yeah. All right, my favorite one to close out on. Seamus uh, sees Patty coming down the street, and Patty's got a black eye. This is my dog. Where'd you get the black eye? He says, you're not going to believe it. I got it in church. You got it in church? What happened? He says, well, every Sunday I take my little nephew to Mass. He said, we're at Mass, and a woman sitting in front of this well, she's got on a, a, a skirt, and well, she's kind of a woman of size, and when she stood up, her, her skirt was kind of tucked between her cheeks. <laughs> so I just leaned in, and I pulled it out. She turned around, she punched me in the eye! This is that's terrible. Don't do that again. This is all I want. I won't. They see each other on the sidewalk the far end of the week. He's got two black eyes. He says, my God, where'd you get the other black eye? He says, well, you know that woman with the skirt? He says, yeah. He says, well, uh, the same thing happened. She stood up. The skirt was in between. Yeah. He says, this time my nephew reaches in and pulls it out. I knew she didn't like that, so I shoved it back in. I'll be sitting back and stay in a It's always fun when we have that audience participation, so we love that. That was good too, John Edling. That was very witty. So anyway, I don't know if any of you remember. It's not a it, it's not a local bar, but there was a there was an Irish pub, Flaherty's in Loudonville, that burned many years ago on Christmas Day. And it was rumored that three of Kevin's uncles were in the bar at the time. They perished in the fire. So, of course, as you would expect, after they passed away, they went up. They got to the pearly gates, and St. Peter's St. Peter was there. And he says, "Welcome, fellas." He says, "I have to tell you, he says, on holidays we like to mix it up a little bit, do something special." So he says, "Seeing it's Christmas, you don't get through the gates unless you can kind of find something that symbolizes Christmas." So the Irish fellows think, all right. So uh, the first guy, going through his pockets, pulls out a lighter, lights the lighter, and he says, candle. St. Peter says, all right, we'll let you pass. Go on. Second Irish fellow, he's not quite sure. He's going through his pockets. He finds a set of keys. Jingles the keys and says, jingle bells. St. Peter says, all right, we'll take that. And then it's on. Kevin's Uncle Festus, a little bit nervous, still a little bit uh, intoxicated, he's fumbling through all of his pockets. Scared look on his face. He pulls out a pair of women's panties and says, these are carols? <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. Hey, if you're gonna be picking on my family, that makes me, you might not believe this, but that makes me think of another joke. <laughs> Come on up here, then. You sure? I mean, no, no, this is your thing, no. you know. <laughs> 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 
This is kind of a sad story, and I thought Al was going down the same road, so I would have had to dance a little bit on this one. But there's this poor fellow, awful drunk. Stops at the pub every night, gets drunk. On the way home, he throws up on himself. Just awful. So his wife says, you know, if you come home one more time, drunk, throwing up on yourself, you're out of here. So the next night, he stops at the pub, has one drink, and he's on his way out the door. So the, the guy says, hey, this is a good customer. Wait, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? She said, well, my wife told me if I get drunk, throw up on myself on the way home. He said, that's it. So the bartender goes, no, no, we got a plan for that here. He says, if you should happen to get drunk and throw up on yourself, on the way home, you slip a $20 bill in your pocket, and you tell your wife it was the guy next to you that threw up on you, and he gave you 20 bucks for the shirt. So he gets drunk, goes home, throws up on himself on the way. Wife's all, all over. He goes, no, no, honey. He says, watch this. He goes, look in here. She pulls out the $20, and he says, that's for the guy that threw up on me. It wasn't me at all. She said, well, that's progress. She goes, what's the other 24? Well, he made a mess in my pants, too. <laughs> Years ago, there's a TV camera right there. Uh, oh, can I continue? <laughs> got some more stuff. Where's Courtney Delora? You can stand, we can't see you way back there. Nobody puts Courtney in the corner. <laughs> so, anyway, I can tell you. Mark, she looks better in a dress than you. <laughs> but anyway, she has two young boys, Dean and Marco. They're in the other room watching TV. They come running out, and they go into the bathroom, and they come out with some feminine products. Courtney's like, what in the world are you doing, fellas? But they were watching TV, and he says, Dean said, you know, we saw it on TV. If you wear these, you can ride a bike and swim. And Marco can't do either of those things. <laughs> <laughs> nice to be honored about your feminine problems. <laughs> How about a, can I do a little audience participation? You could all please stand. Everybody, if you can. Do you want to go to the restroom or anything, Matt? Okay, this would be a good time. Uh, we were talking about how, you know, we've all been at this a little while and we're getting older. So we're going to try to narrow this down a little bit. If you were ever here when Joe Bornstein, the first Irishman of the year ever, was here at the podium with me, sit down. If you were born before 1974, you could sit down. <laughs> 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 and you probably weren't at my high school graduation. <laughs> If you've never been, if you have been to the breakfast any time before, you can sit down. <laughs> this is where the fresh meat is. <laughs> if you know who Pat Russell is, and can identify him, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> you 
You may be seated, but I want to introduce you to Pat Russell. <laughs> Pat, stand up, please. <laughs> Matt, did you tell him to sit down? <laughs> he gets tired. Please stand back up. And your lovely wife is with you. Can she stand up with you? Well, like we say, the reason I asked Jan to stand up is because she told me this story and told me never tell anybody, so I thought I'd share it with you. <laughs> so Pat is getting older like the rest of us, and he doesn't hear well. So we go to the doctor, and Jan has to go with him. And he has his physical examination. And he says, the doctor says, we're going to need a stool sample, a urine specimen, and a sperm specimen. And he asks Jenny, he goes, what did he say? He said, he wants your underwear. <laughs> Thank you for being that. transition from dirty underwear to the barber shop. <laughs> Looks like they're moving into place. How about some good harmony in the barber shop? Oh. Uh -huh. 
These men have jobs, they love children, and they're extremely good looking. Wow, she thinks. But she felt compelled to keep going. She gets to floor three, sign reads, these men have jobs, they love children, they're drop dead good looking, and they help with the housework. Mercy me, she explains, I can hardly stand it. But still, she goes on to the next floor. The sign reads, they have these guys have jobs, love children, they're drop dead gorgeous, they help with the housework, and they have a romantic streak. She is tempted to stay, but of course goes to the next floor, where the sign reads, you are visitor 31,456,000. There are no men on this floor. The floor exists solely as proof that women are impossible to please. <laughs> Thank you for shopping at the husband's store. I want to avoid the problem of gender bias. So there's a new store that's opened across the street, and it's the wife store. The first floor sign reads, these women are quite amorous. Second floor says, these women are amorous, they're financially well off, and they like to drink beer. The third, the fourth, the fifth floor have never been visited. <laughs> In that same vein of economic development, I'm sure you've all seen some of the articles over the last year or two. The governor and his team have been working hard at, uh, at uh, ramping up and making our Olympic venues and facilities that much better. And uh, he'd like that promoted throughout the state and beyond. So he tasked our Chamber of Commerce here at Plattsburgh with creating a poster series, inspirational posters but with shots of the Olympic venues being used. And I thought I'd share a sneak peek of them with you here today. Our number one, speed skate. <laughs> Hopefully you can see them, but as you see, the, uh, the uh, caption is Take Charge, and we've got Dave Champagne and Paul Grasso there on the screen. Good job, Paul. Number two is the doubles lose. <laughs> Passion, teamwork, and we have our supervisor, Cashman, and Mayor Reed. <laughs> Pairs figure skating with the caption is flexibility, important in the workplace, and it's the marketing tool. <laughs> Downhill. Expect the unexpected with Lena McCullough, unfortunately taking a fall, but I'm sure there's insurance for that. <laughs> this was a bit off topic. Unfortunately, um, one of the teams that went to Placid to try and compete, um, one of the team members really couldn't make the height requirement in any of the activities, but they didn't want to waste the day. They went sledding. <laughs> and of course, the caption is work hard, but have fun. And then last, not least, something to leave that is inspirational. <laughs> Mary Douglas in the ski jump, onward and upward. <laughs> John Vermette uh, mentioned John Etling uh, in his uh, pending retirement. John, you are a special man, you will be missed. But we also wanted to not miss the opportunity and frankly be remiss if we didn't mention our good friend, Paul Grasso, who's trying to fade, fade away and do it quietly, but we have to at least uh, thank him for all that he's done. He's done so much to help the economic development landscape of the area. Just a good guy, and, and we thank you for all you've done, Paul. And so many have said how much he's going to be missed. Are we really going to miss him that <laughs> way? Well, it's Christmas. I believe, Kevin, wherever you ended up, oh, there you go. It's time for the Royal Order, I believe. I thought with your Irish brogue, you'd be something to read it.
All right, enough of the shenanigans. Let's get on to honoring this year's Irish Person of the Year. Whereas, on March 17, 1959, there did band together on the banks of the Sharnak River in Plattsburgh, New York, in the North Country, a group of intrepid Irishmen who established the great and honorable royal order of the Bar. And whereas it was the most important to be fostered and perpetrated, thereby the gentle, pleasant, effective, and provocative part of Irish blend. And whereas this art has played a significant part in promoting and advancing the welfare, prosperity, happiness, and credibility of many of the area's most prominent citizens, and has served as a cornerstone of some of its most successful and memorable enterprises and institutions. And whereas it has been decreed that there should be annually admitted to the membership of the Royal Order, those kindly souls imbued with the spirit of St. Patrick, blessed with the art of Blarney, not necessarily blessed with Irish men, who by use of quick and facile tongue have nevertheless endeared themselves to the Irish race. And whereas such a person is with us here this morning, as has been the tradition for nearly 30 years now, flying under the radar of the acts of kindness and sharing North Country hospitality with those from near and far. Straying from convention, we could not choose a single Irish name for this year's award, but indeed have found ourselves totally lucky to honor a dynamic duo. Therefore, be it resolved, having full confidence in their malarkey, looking to secure their place in Irish prosperity, and seeking to bestow upon the evidence of our esteem and affection, we do hereby confer upon Jim and Joanne Hockney, the Royal Order of the Blind. Patrick Doyle, Mahoney, or Hockney, and give you all the rights and privileges and the outrageous prerogatives of the order. We've, we've enjoyed and uh, 
proud to support it, but we've been also proud to be members of this community. And you may know we're surprised. <laughs> we're honored today. Thank you very much. We couldn't be more proud of our choice this year. So for those of you who don't know Jim and Joanne, get to know them. They have done so much for our Chamber of Commerce. We work with all these behind the scenes. So we might need help putting boutonnieres on next year because they put the boutonnieres on people for the last at least 25, 26 years. So anyway, I think it's time for the basket of cheer, Jim. We'll see who's not going back to work. <laughs> I want to thank Primely for donating the basket of cheer. Hopefully Randy didn't take anything out of it. <laughs> so the winning number is 748550. 748550. Last three digits are 550. Oh, it must be me. Five five zero. shoppers end us with one uh, great ditty at the end and uh, thank you all for joining us this morning and we'll turn it over to the barber shops.